Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you everything that's new in iOS 18. As you can see, I'm going to be showing you this on my iPhone 14 Pro and iOS 18 is going to be available all the way back till the iPhone XR and iPhone SE second generation. So if you have those phones or anything newer, it will work fine once it finally releases. Okay, so the first thing that you will notice right away are the new wallpapers. So let's take a look at them. I will just long press like always, add a new wallpaper and as you can see right away here they are. iOS 18 wallpapers. You can also scroll down here till you find iOS 18 and all of them will be loaded up. This is the light theme wallpapers so you can take a look at them. As you can see they are pretty nice. I like that they did like four variations of them compared to last time where they only did like the one main one. They are a little buggy like pretty much everything else in this update but I really do like how they look and in the final build they will be all fine of course. The new thing over here in iOS 18 are these two little icons that you could never change before, but now you can put pretty much anything in there. So when I do the little minus button on the camera and now try to add something, you see that there are lots of options over here which you can choose from. But the most important one by far is shortcuts open app. And it's kind of buggy right now that that menu just shows down, but I will just hit add add the new wallpaper pair and now when I hit customize again, open it up again and when I hit the little icon that showed up once again and now when I hit choose over here I can choose any application in my iOS. So I will choose health for example, now go away, hit done and once this whole process is done I can go back and as you can see the little health icon is right there and when I long press on it it will open up the health app right away. Okay so let's now go to the home screen and as you can see it looks pretty normal but when I long press on it and go into wiggle mode, you can see that instead of the little plus that was right here, there's an edit button now. You can click on it and hit customize and now you can customize your icons. You can either go with the automatic style so it switches with light and dark mode. As you can see, I'm currently in light mode so all of my icons are in light. But when I hit the dark, all of the iOS native icons are going to go to their dark counterparts. And if I want to make them a little bit bigger, I can hit large over here, which will remove all of the text below them and it will be much more aesthetically pleasing. And now to take it a step further, I can go into tinted and customize the color of all of my icons. As you can see, there are lots of options over here. You can do them super saturated or just go all the way to white like that and have them neutral. And if you are unsure that this is going to match your wallpaper, you can hit this little icon right there and choose a color out of your actual wallpaper. So let's say this kind of red and all of our icons are now matching the wallpaper. This doesn't really look good so I'm just going to switch to this whitish one and that looks pretty good in my opinion. So I will just hit back and as you can see now we have a perfectly styled home screen. These apps aren't the only one that gets changed, it's all of your apps that are right here. All of the Apple specific apps have kind of like their custom textures but all of the other apps that you have installed on your phone like for example the Blackmagic camera that I have right here or Fiverr are just going to get a color overlay so it looks pretty nice. Another thing that iOS users have been hoping for a long time is to move their icons wherever they want. So if we go into wiggle mode once again I can grab the little YouTube icon and for example place it over here and place the notes icon if I actually grab it right over here and I can leave it like that. The next thing that you can do on your home screen right away instead of going into the whole widget compartment you can just hold down on the actual icon of an app that you would like the widget to and now choose a widget directly from here. So I will choose this widget and as you can see I have all of this right here and now if I long press on it I can change the sizes and if I go into edit mode this little rounded corner will appear and I can resize the entire thing right away like that. A cool thing that they added to apps in general is that when you long press you can now require face ID to actually unlock an app. So when I press it, it will actually ask me if I want to require face ID. So I will do require face ID. It will now scan my face. Just give me a second. And now every time I want to open up reminders, it will pop up with face ID, watch for my face, and then it will open up the actual app itself. And now if you don't want people to know about some third party apps that you have on your iPhone, like for example, WhatsApp 
over here, you can just long press on it, go to require face ID, and now you can choose height and require face ID. So it will scan my face really quickly, and now hide WhatsApp and it will hide it. So hide app, it will disappear from my home screen and in my locker room over here, in my library, I will go all the way to the bottom and now you have this new one right here, which is hidden. And to open it, it will require face ID. Hopefully I will just unlock it quickly for you. And as you can see, WhatsApp is right there. So I can open it up. It will prompt me to open up Face ID again. And now I can actually go to my WhatsApp. And to actually remove after you've done trying it out, you can just long press on it and go to don't require Face ID. And now once you scan your face, once again, it will just go back to normal. Also one more thing that pretty much nobody will notice, but it's truly one of my favorites about iOS 18 is that when you press any kind of button, like for example, the volume buttons, this little animation on the side of the screen will play like you were pressing it into the screen. And this works with both of the volumes buttons and also with the power button itself. Okay, now let's go into control center. And this is probably the biggest change that most people are actually going to notice if they don't fiddle around with all of these settings. So as you can see, my control center looks pretty normal because I kind of kept it that way, but you can hit this little plus right over here and it will go into edit mode. And now you can just tap on add a control and choose one of these different controls that developers can actually add to their apps. So we will be seeing lots and lots of these. And let's, for example, add a quick note and it will add like that. If I want to make it larger, I can again grab the little curved edge over here and just stretch it about, and it will do the larger thing. And if I want to add another page of this, I can just grab one of these and just slide down, go with my finger, and as you can see, that's another page, and I can just cycle throughout these pages when I have Control Center open. Like for example, the music app over here goes really large, so you can have an entire space just filled up with your favorite music. And you can just go up and down, and when you're done, you can just click into the empty space. Another thing that they added to the control center when you're in a FaceTime call, let's say, you can just go into a control center and you remember all of the things that would just show up here. So you can just click and now you have your audio and video settings right here. And you can switch all of your microphone settings right over here, going from automatic to standard to voice isolation to wide spectrum, and now also change up the camera as well. So you can go to portraits, for example, some studio lighting as well, and do all of this stuff directly in your control center while doing a FaceTime call. So two little other changes before we move on to apps is that when you start a stopwatch now, it will actually appear in the dynamic island and it will also show the milliseconds right here. The second thing that I also wanted to show you is the new flash. So when I turn on the flashlight, as you can see, my dynamic island has this brand new animation. And it's pretty cool because when I turn my light off, I will just quickly do that for you. So when I turn it up, it will go brighter and brighter. It's kind of laggy right now because the beta, but when I go back, it will now just go super dim. And one more thing that's the new flashes, which the iPhone 14 Pro and later have, is that you can actually adjust the whole width of the actual flashlight. So when I move it from side to side, it will now adjust the width. And as you can see, the bright light, when I turn it up again, it's super focused now. And when I move it to the side and make it wider, it's actually like focusing outwards. And also to turn it on and off, you just click on the flashlight itself. Okay, let's now move to the apps. And one that I use pretty much every single day of my life is the calendar app. And the cool thing here is that you can now add reminders to your calendars and it will actually show up. So as you can see, I have this little reminder over here to take creatine every single day at 2 p.m. And it will now show up in my calendar and I can actually just click on it and complete it in my calendar directly. I can also, when I'm adding a new event by just long pressing over here, I, I can either add an event like before, or I can directly add a reminder in the calendar app. The calendar app also gets a few new views. Like for example, if you used to just watching your single day, you can go into multi-day now. And if you go back to this view of your entire month, you can cycle through different views. Like this compact one was the one that we had before. And you can go into the stacked view now. And as you can see, you can also zoom in and zoom out to show all of the things that are pretty much on your schedule right here. So that's the calendar app and pretty much the biggest news that got announced this WWDC is changes to the calculator app. So 
I'm just going to go right here into calculator and it looks pretty much like before. But the new features here are pretty amazing. So first and foremost, when you are doing some calculations, you can see the history of your actual calculations right up here, which is super useful. Also, if you're doing some calculations and you do a mistake, you can now just go back like this. Before you had to swipe and not many people knew about that feature actually. The next thing was to activate the scientific calculator, you had to turn your phone sideways, but now it's just does the regular thing. So if you want this scientific calculator, you need to hit this little calculator icon and go to scientific and it will open up all of these options for you. And it will be also available in the vertical section like this. The other feature that's super useful, let's switch to the basic calculator and now hit convert over here and it will convert pretty much anything into anything. You can tap on the currency that will be right there and you can pretty much convert all of these things. So let's say that I want to convert temperature and Celsius into Fahrenheit. And let's do, for example, let's do AC and let's now do minus 40 because minus 40 degrees Celsius is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a useful fact for you to know. It's also like 233 Kelvin or something like that. So you can do conversions now directly in your calculator. And now the super cool thing that you are going to show off to pretty much every single one of your friends is math nodes. You open up math nodes, as you can see, I have been trying a few of them and you hit a new node. And now you can basically type in like three minus four. And as soon as it recognizes that it's an equation, it will just calculate it for you. But the really cool thing here is that you can hit this little markup icon and you can just go like, three plus three equals. And as soon as it sees the equal sign, it will actually do the math. It's really awesome that it actually duplicates like your handwriting. So it just looks correct. And I can now, for example, do like parentheses and do a squared. And now it should also calculate that it's 36. Yeah, three plus three, that's six. And six times six, it's 36. Great, math. That's math notes in the calculator, but the really awesome thing is that you can just go into your regular notes app and it's actually also available over here. So I can just go into new notes, hit the little markup and now do four, hit, yeah, four plus four equals, and it will actually do the calculation directly over here. So I can just do solve and it will do eight. I don't know if you can see it because it's super thin, but it's available in the notes app and also in the free form app from Apple. Now a really quick one, if you're in Safari and you have any kind of blog article or anything like that open, you can just long press on this icon right here and it will convert it into a reader mode. You can just customize this when you press on it and as you can see it's reader and it will do these different kind of backgrounds with all of these different fonts that you have, for example, New York. And as you can see, I have this really nice article that I can just read without all of the ads and distractions that carry on with being on a regular website. And if I would have liked to go back, I can just long press on it again and it will just jump me back to the regular site with all of the other crap. Safari is also supposed to pop up with different articles when you're, for example, on some sites to summarize it, but I couldn't really get it to work because it's probably not available in my country. Now iMessage has gotten really cool updates with iOS 18. You can, for example, when you're writing, you can just select your text like that and now go over here into styles and you can do different styles of the text itself. So let's say explode, for example, and let's send it over. And as you can see, as it loads, it will actually do the explode animation. You can also go into this plus sign, go down here. And as you can see, there's send later. And when I now click send later and do any kind of text, I can just do today at 7 p.m. I can send it and it will send at that time to the person. And last but not least, if you are already using reactions to your text, this is just going to supercharge them. So like we were doing before, you just hold down and all of these reactions will pop up. And as you can see, they are now colored and you can also swipe to the sides to see all of your most used emojis right there. And you can also add any kind of emoji as a reaction to the text. So let's say this glass dude, and as you can see, it's a little pop-up that we had before but with an emoji. So the second to last thing that I actually wanted to show you today is in the Photos app. And as you can see, once I open it, it looks completely different because it has a new redesign. And they redesigned pretty much the whole app because when I open up a photo of myself, it has this nice little curved edge at the corners especially, and you can just swipe through your photos. It feels much more like a gallery than before. And when I go down, I can just swipe like this to get the normal view that we are all used to. And I can just go to a video of mine 
and the new video player has this little time frame right down here and you can also unmute the audio right here instead of fiddling around like before down in this section. They also added the option for your entire library to actually go down here and you can now do view options and you can show screenshots and turn that off because I usually take a lot of screenshots of everything on my phone but with this setting I can finally turn them all off and just have them in case I need them later. You can go back to all of these albums that it's going to put down here as you can see it's recent days over here it's people paint collections and so on you can also swipe to the right and it will do all of these fancy like you know the films that it always did out of the photos app so it will just do them out of different albums that you have okay and the very last thing that i wanted to show you today is the brand new passwords app that they added because before you needed to go into settings and just look at your passwords right there but now it has an entire app and i think with this app right over here if I get it unlocked it just summarizes all of your passwords all of your Wi-Fi passwords as well all of your passkeys codes everything that you need in one single app you can also create groups for your passwords if you have for example like 20 accounts on Instagram for all of your stalking needs then you can create a group for all of those accounts okay so that's gonna be it for today hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one bye bye